What the world needs right now is love, sweet love. <laughs> and on this Inspired Living interview, I sit down with world-renowned coach, best-selling author, and love catalyst Danielle Laporte. And you notice my voice changes because her voice is so soothing. And in this interview, we talk about her new book, How to Be Loving, as your heart is breaking open and the world is waking up. And we deep dive into how to operate from a place of love, self-compassion, empathy, and how from really choosing to operate from that place, how different the world could be, your world could be. I am beyond grateful and honored to have Danielle on the interview today. And if you find yourself living in a state of anxiety and fear and chaos, this interview is really gonna, it's gonna rock your world. She shared some really great techniques and thoughts that made me think deeper, uh, more about how I'm operating and how I want to be operating, who I want to embody. Get ready, my friend, for a very inspired interview with Miss Danielle Laporte. All right, my inspired living family, you are in for such a treat today. I'm going to say I am in for such a treat today because I get to sit down with the amazing Danielle Laporte. Danielle, welcome. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Hello, Carrie. Hello. Let's, okay. So I don't know what see, we're going to talk just about, says but it's hello. Be great. <laughs> you just say hello, and I just, everything in my body wants to go yeah. calm. Thank uh, you for that. <laughs> I'm good for the nervous system, I think. You yeah. are. You are. No wonder why you have the community <laughs> that you do and the reach that you do, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But Danielle, today we're talking about all things love. Mm -hmm. um, and in particular, your new book, which is your first in five years. You've had great successes with your previous books. Why? How to be loving and why now? And I love the tagline as your heart is breaking open and the world is waking up. Mm -hmm. Share. Share about the book and, and what was the catalyst for bringing this book out into the world right now? Well, the response, even when I give the title to somebody is there's like this exhale and people, this is across the board, even with dudes. They yeah. just say, that's time. Yeah. And it's time. Like we are in the bind. We are in division. We are in conflict in our kitchens and on a global scale. And we know everybody knows everybody listening right now knows that like love is the game changer in a really dysfunctional game. Mm -hmm. uh, the book really is about truthful identification like are you going to see yourself as love or are you going to see yourself as fear yeah because how you see yourself is going to affect how you show up and the thoughts you choose and all of that and um this is the medicine like we're just let's just cut through all of the ego stuff and all of the intellectualizing that happens in the self-help space and just get to like okay we all know what it is to be loving and we know it would yes. change everything yeah it seems like such an easy concept. Love, love yourself more, love people more, love the world more. And yet, Danielle, I would say when you say, you know, do you see yourself as love or do you see yourself as fear? Why, why the struggle around that? Why do we have such a hard time giving self-love, showing more love to others in this cancel culture that we live in? Like, mm -hmm. why, why does it feel so challenging? for so many. Well, this has been going on for a long time, like human has, history. Yeah. So everybody yeah. got to let themselves off the hook for like where we're at. <laughs> um, I think we live from the head mm. and, you know, there's instinct. Instinct is useful. It keeps you alive. There's danger run in the other direction. Great. We've moved beyond that. And then there's just strategy and strategy is good for building stuff but without heart baked into it without inclusiveness it doesn't matter what the structure is and these are the structures that are coming down mm -hmm. and it's like it's really only the virtue um compassion and loving kindness and radiance that creates anything that you're going to be happy to like continue like especially in a business framework Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
everybody knows how to pull stuff off. We can, there's, there's steps, there's strategies, there's lots of methodologies. Manifestation is a technology. Anybody can employ it. My observation is when you set goals that really come from your loving awareness, like um, I'm, I want to do this out of a sense of feeling connected to everybody else. I want to do this out of a sense of like, I want to get above the noise. Then when you pull stuff off, it's, there's a sweetness to it. There's a, um, there's a depth to it. So it's like, you can get all the same things. You can, you can get the money, you can get the launch, you can get whatever, but you know, I know, you know, um, yeah. I've, 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 I feel this so mm. much right now because there are so many people talking about strategy and this is the way to do the thing. And, yeah. you know, even we, you know, we talk about video and being visible and how important that is, but it's all about the being Danielle. And that's what you're mm. really saying mm. is that everything mm. that you do is about being love mm. and embodying it, embodying which is, that. Yeah. And that this is a, a word I'm starting to see a lot in our space embodiment. I mean, it's not, it's not new, but it's getting more buzzy mm -hmm. and embodiment just means to like be consistent. So do you want to be compassionate? Great. You're going to be compassionate in the tone of your voice. You're going to be compassionate in how you construct the email, your marketing campaign. There is a way that you can have compassionate marketing and compat, yes. you know, we know and ethical business and all of that. So it's, uh, you're going to think compassion, you're going to act be express compassion. Yeah, consistency. And how is that different, Danielle? Because you had the desire code. How is that different than feeling? Feeling mm -hmm. and embodying for someone who's like struggling with the difference there. Mm -hmm. Feeling is, it's something that comes and goes. It's not impossible to control, but there's an uncontrollability. It's, it's a bit like feelings are, you got to wrangle them, generate them, wrangle them. They're like, the clouds, you know, <laughs> and embodiment is like, I'm in a state of choice. This is a higher vibration. This is a higher level of consciousness. It's like, um, I think the best way to illustrate this is the announcement is that love is not a feeling love creates feelings, mm -hmm. but love is a higher state of consciousness. It's a virtue. You want that to pour into your thoughts. You want that to pour in to how you move your body. You want it to make its way into your quarterly objectives. Mm -hmm. and, and when you do that, then there's going to be happy. Then there's going to be sad, all sorts of feelings that accompany the state of consciousness. And your book walks us through on how to do those things. Is it something that mm. is, is it linear, Danielle? Not that anything that you do is, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but getting the book and going through the book and you have this beautiful journal that accompanies the book. What's that experience that we're going to have when we get yeah. our hands on how to be loving? Well, I've been hearing this. I can tell you, I mean, this is what I've heard. I mean, I love how your face just lights up when you think <laughs> about the, the feedback that you're getting, right? Cause that's the place you're in right now. And if you can't see yeah. Danielle, you're going to have yeah. to watch the video. Cause she literally is beaming light right now. <laughs> Well, the, what I want to have happen is I want to be getting an infinite an amount of messages about, I forgave my mother. I speak more gently to myself. I sleep better mm -hmm. through the night. I just, I get what self-acceptance is. I'm softer. Mm -hmm. Cool. What I'm hearing is um, some of that for sure. Like I thought this was going to be a step-by-step -step book on how to have better relationships. And I spent the whole weekend with the book and I feel much more gentle towards myself. I'm also hearing like, it's a little bit affronting for some people mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as self-acceptance is. Uh, it is about seeing yourself as more than just this kind of surface identity and that that's where the power is. And, yeah. and you accept your shadow, you get to really play with your light. Yeah. I want to talk about that. I actually have that in my, my notes, the shadow mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. I know what it is, but I haven't really, I, I haven't heard that term that much. And so mm -hmm. can you share with the inspired living family? Like, how do we, how do we work? Cause we all have the shadow, right? We all yes. have that side of us. I think we try to fight that 
that shadow. Yes. Yes. Um, and that's where you talk about too, how important it is to feel and not to just put our feelings under the rug, which I can say I have lots of experience doing and mm -hmm. how your feelings can be a compass. Let's talk about the shadow though. Mm -hmm. um, what is, what is your definition or reference to shadow and, and how, how does that play with the love? Mm -hmm. uh, your shadow is the stuff that you don't want to deal with. Mm. It's the Who stuff has stuff they don't, they don't want to deal, deal with. with. <laughs> yeah. You're avoiding it. You're neglecting it. You're hiding it. You're afraid of it. Mm. Um, it's, it's all the stuff that lives in what I call the basement of your psyche yeah. and consciousness, self-empowerment is about looking at what's in the basement so that it doesn't control you. So you don't have a conversation. And afterwards you think, I cannot believe I said that. Who said that? Your, your subconscious self said that. The mm -hmm. stuff in the basement that you haven't looked at yet said that. Yeah. The stuff that you haven't looked at yet chose the relationship that's gone south or the business idea that you felt, felt well, a little skeezy about all along. Right. So look at the stuff, the fear, the neuroses, the anxiety. It all has a message for you. All of it, all of it all of it, all emotion is just wanting your loving attention. That's it. Your fear is just saying, Hey, I've been living in your shadow. Can you look at me? Oh, I'll look at you. I'm not going to push you away. I'm not yeah. going to try and overcome you or like dominate. Let me look at you. Oh, anxiety. Oh, fear of success. Oh, fear of intimacy. It just wants you to see it. Mm. That's it. That's how you get yeah. more powerful. Yes. Look at it and then love it. It sounds easy, but I think that can be challenging for a lot of people just to love, love that shadow and the acceptance. Mm -hmm. You talk a lot about self-acceptance and acceptance of people. And I think Danielle, gosh, with all that we see on social media and all that we see on the news and the cancel culture that we have right now, and just the divisiveness across the board, mm -hmm. how, how do we, how do we show compassion and love to that shadow? how do we choose love over fear? Like literally that's stuck from like a real practical sense. We have a decision yep. or, or yep. there's someone that pisses us off or like yep. we're just so frustrated with the world. How do we consciously make a decision towards love? Like, can you walk me through that? Yeah. I think one of the, uh, the power moves is first realizing, even just consider everybody is a reflection of you. And we hear this a lot in the self-help space, Yes, but I tell you, it's highly likely that this will, it'll change your life. So you're in a bind, you're in that confrontation, you're super judging or you're super being judged. Can you just pause, just have the fleeting thought, this person is a reflection of me. And they may be way more greedy, narcissistic, self-absorbed than you are currently, but you have been that before. Mm. And just get to that. Oh, I was that. I've been that. And you just find this little moment of common ground and that judgment in you is going to chill. And then you think, wow, that, that's actually the loving move, right? That's not yes. the love. I've been that before. Yeah. Maybe it was a decade ago. Maybe it's, maybe you're going to be that tomorrow. Um, everybody is a reflection. And I see this a lot with women in the personal development space of like, ah, oh, I got involved with a narcissist and I'm all, and I'm sensitive. It's like, yeah, but they still reflect you in some way. So mm. you may just have a little grain of it. You may just have a little speck of tyranny or judgmentalness that you are judging everybody else for. You just look at your grain. Mm. You just take care of your 10%. You just clean up your side of the street and you just get stronger. You get more self-aware. You make clear decisions. So everybody is reflecting a part of you on some level all of the time without exception, universal that law. That can be, that can be a hard pill, a, a hard grain to swallow, yeah. but I, I, I yeah. absolutely understand what you're saying. And as, as I think about people that I judge or feel a certain, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> hostility. Thank you. Hostility toward mm. it's, there's not many, but to say I'm like that sometimes I see, I yeah. see that in me. And it is, the thing is, yeah. it is, it is true. Like yes. we or you, you could be body that character. I mean, you could take an extreme example of someone who is violent and extremely hostile. I mean, most of us would be thinking, I'm not that person. I'm yeah. gentle and ethical and 
all the good things. Yes. You have the capacity for that. Mm. If you were raised differently, if you were born on the other side of something that is in you, that darkness is in you. Mm. Yes. And just consider that. And yeah. it shifts your perspective and how you engage. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. I was watching a, a video the other day, just the other day. And it was about this, um, this traffic stop. Well, this guy, it was, it was a race. What, what am I saying, Danielle? It was a car chase and this uh, guy, uh. I don't know if you saw this video, but this guy ended up hitting a woman in a van mm -hmm. and she came out like hell on wheels. Like, and the whole post was about, you know, women, we don't know what we're capable of because we don't normally get in those situations. Like I didn't know until I became a mom that I had this, this fury, this mama bear that lived inside me that would do go. anything to protect my children that got mm -hmm. so pissed when someone wronged them. I didn't know that existed in me. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of that is like, we don't, we might not have had that experience, but we all have it within us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I've been in, um, I've been in a, uh, car accident where it was my fault. I rear ended this guy. It was in the rain and he got out and he came for me. We're standing on the highway. It was like a really dramatic scene, you know, and all every name and close, you know, didn't, didn't lay hands on me, but I had the, of course, you know, I was shocked, but I had the capacity to just say, oh, he's scared. Yeah. And it, cha it completely changed how I moved through that. Mm. And I think that's another power move. Somehow they're reflecting me. I have this in me somewhere that I've never seen before, or I see it all the time. And most people, when they move into offensiveness or defense, they're just afraid. That's all. Yeah, it's it has nothing to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a great point, Danielle. And I think about even just talking to you and, and knowing the little that I do, but the so much I'm enamored with in your life and who you've become and the business that you've built. It would seem like Danielle Laporte, like you have you have a really strong sense of self. You stand up, you, you don't apologize for who you are, but yet you have this really calm way of being. What do you do when you get into a place where you're pissed off or you know something riles you up like do, do you go through that do you still have those moments oh, of yeah. anger and yeah. and frustration and because you, you know it's like knowing but how do you implement that do you do the same thing how do you take yourself out of that state or do you mm. not always, <laughs> not always. <laughs> no um breath work is a thing mm. that Talk to me about is that. effective i have been in the grocery store and had you know confrontational uh, potentials let's say just say I'm just like, <laughs> you know and just breathe four counts in hold it for four exhale for four hold it for four and repeat mm. and I realized I don't have to say what I was going to say I don't have the need to say it works a lot in relationships this is some of the best relationship advice I've ever been given don't say it mm -hmm. I was like what you've been married you married 30 years what's your advice don't say it don't say what don't say it. Oh, don't say the thing. Yeah. Don't say don't the say thing. It. The ego wants to say the thing. Yeah. Your wounded self wants to prove how right you are, oh. how wise you are and get what it thinks it's, it needs. But the heart is really okay with the situation. The heart can just let it be. Something else is coming in the next moment. Um, breathing helps, but you know, I still have outbursts. I definitely have some uh, lingering authority issues mm -hmm. and I feel a lot of shame when it happens. And, you know, especially being, well, sometimes I can think, you know, I'm in this, this is my vocation to speak right. about love and consciousness. And I just totally flipped off on that chick, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you are human. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the best thing is to not, overjudge myself for doing that. Just like, wow, you know what? I was afraid. I was yeah. afraid of losing power. I was afraid of looking bad. I was afraid of not getting what I wanted. And it brought out the thing in my basement that doesn't like to be talked to that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, when I can forgive myself in those big moments, then I can 
I navigate my, my, all, all relationships become more kind. Actually, mm. I'm a lot better to deal with in terms of customer service. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And that is really good relationship advice. I'm going to remember to breathe and just, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be said. And you're right. The, the ego wants to be right. The ego wants to prove, um, talk to me more about ego. I know you talk about it in the book mm -hmm. as well. I think there's different descriptions perhaps of mm -hmm. ego and how mm -hmm. ego is viewed or referred to what is your definition how do you see ego and and how do we relate to that mm -hmm. i love talking about the ego because mm, I, I do I feel too it's <clears throat> been such a struggle yeah um i feel that the ego is our exaggerated sense of a separate self so it's the mind lying to us all the time to say uh you're less than or you're more than or you're right and they're wrong. It's just always dividing, dividing, separating, um, counting, mm. strategizing. And I used to think of the ego as like something outside of myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't even like, it's a part of my consciousness, but like, it's a thing over there and I should be ashamed of it. And I should try to always dominate it and be in mm. charge it needs to be like put in its place so that I can be a more spiritual enlightened person. Right. right. It's like, <laughs> that's the opposite. We can't have ego and spiritually enlightened. Hello. But here's the thing. The ego is your baby. You made it. It's your creation. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a construct of the mind of your mind. So why would you betray your own creation? Why would you not love your little thought babies? Mm. It, it's just, it's like, it's just like all the other emotions asking for your attention. So now how I deal with ego, which we live in, we're humans. Mm -hmm. This is the duality is instead of saying, you know, when I do something that wasn't really on, instead of saying, oh, that's my ego. And, you know, kind of uh, being in a tussle with it, I just say, oh, I was egoing. I was egoing when I was, I when I was so not nice to that customer service person on the other <laughs> end of the phone, um, I was egoing. I forgot. I temporarily forgot that I am a loving person and everybody is a loving person. Just, yeah. we just forget and we do silly things. Yeah. <laughs> I think that when it comes to ego, Danielle, a lot of people probably don't even think about ego or um, the difference between, you know, the, the conscious and the subconscious and how, you know, we have so much in the basement um, mm -hmm. that comes up and so much, my understanding, and, and please tell me if, if you have other thoughts around this, is that the ego really is developed between one and seven during that imprint period. So is it something mm -hmm. that we continue to develop or is it something that was formed based on religion, environment, what people told us that then forms an idea of us that we carry around as a should be or a must mm -hmm. or this is how i would put it i think everybody comes in with an ego i think we're in a we're closer to a state of beingness when we get here i think what happens between one and seven is the social programming and cultural conditioning really yeah. starts to get crammed in there we get indoctrinated, we get trained in all sorts of things for better and for worse. I mean, right. we get trained in morality and yeah. ethics and kindness, and that's all good. We also get trained to like think small and get hooked into systems of accountability and punishment. Hmm. Um, Having a seven-year-old, I, I really think about that a lot. Like, oh, her imprint period just passed. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I used to think, I still think about, oh my God, how I was when my son was two is that what he's going to be in therapy for someday? Right, I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. We're going to got to be, they all got to be in therapy for something. So. For something. Yeah. 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 So how does someone understand or, or even think about their ego? So for someone who isn't aware maybe, or yeah. hasn't um, had like the conversation of how ego mm -hmm. is driving their actions, or like you said, love and fear, is there a way for us to recognize it? Yeah. I think just consider this, that you are choosing your thoughts. And I okay, wait a minute. I've, say that, say that again, Daniel. Yes. You are choosing your thoughts. And I know that's like a revelation for a lot of people. Powerful. At some point you, you, 
you're going to get it at some point on the journey. You're choosing your thoughts. What are you feeding your mind? What do you, mm-hmm. what are you feeding your mind? So the mind gets fed that one to seven time period that you talked about the songs that you listen, like here, this is it. Listen to any quote unquote love song. That's like, you know, billboard charts right now. And what's the message. And can you see how that shows up in your life that, you know, there's, there's revenge or there's heartbreak, or you're never going to recover, or you're not really Mm -hmm. worthy, or what do you got to do? Or the messaging is mostly terrible. And you're the it's stuff that is so true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've gone completely on a diet of negative programming from all sources. So like, even if it's got a great backbeat and, you know, I want to rock out to it in my kitchen. If the message says that I'm going to get heartbroken or someone did somebody wrong or what it's off. Yeah. Even old, it's still, it's still programming. It's still coming right. in there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's why I haven't watched the news in over a decade now. And yeah, I mean, the news is a whole other conversation around who really controls all that. And, and yeah, I watched yeah. it during the, ele- I just can't, I just like, there's nothing I get that is inspiring or love filled when it comes to the news. So yeah. where do you get, where do you get your information? Well, I've navigated fine with what's going on in the world. I mean, I do ingest a lot through social media and through Instagram, but I don't go down too deeply into any of it. Um, I do what I can in terms of things that are moving me with social justice and environmental causes and and that. You Um, give a lot, which is beautiful. I try. I always feel I could give more, but we've that's baked into our business model. I really think that, you know, business has been the business is the the vehicle for greed. Business has pillaged most of our resources Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's wreaking havoc on our nervous systems and business could be the medicine that the planet needs. It could, you know, just imagine commerce that was moral. Yes. Could turn this whole ship around. Yeah. I'm working on it with you, sister. I am working Mm. on it. Let's Mm. take a quick shift Mm. into the business journey of Danielle Laporte. I know that, um, I love it. You're like, I've been around the cosmic block a few times. Um, (laughs) you've built a beautiful brand, uh, not just a brand, but really, a a heartbeat, a vibe, a community, a, Mm. um, a movement for heart-based, you know, women, for women who are seeking community, more self-awareness, more love, more peace. Where did you start? Like where, I know this is a, could be a very long story, but Mm -hmm. what were some of the key lessons for you in building your brand and becoming Mm -hmm. who you are today? If you were to look back and say, wow, it was those decisions that really allowed me to step into this wholeness, which I feel like you are. I just feel like you're this really beautiful whole being um, that still has her shadow side that she deals with, right? But it's just, you you show up in a really powerful, authentic way. And so I can't imagine it was always easy for you maybe to do that, or was it? Take me back a little. Well, it was easy in that I've always operated in in the wheelhouse, you could say, Mm -hmm. of my gifts. Like Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be something other than what I am. This is what I'm good at. I'm going to do this. Did you always know that? Uh, I could have done a bunch of different things. I thought, well, I was going to go into fashion design. I thought for a while about being a documentary filmmaker. It was always about creativity. Mm -hmm. Even with fashion design, I wanted to do some kind of really disruptive socially responsible something i wasn't quite i can sure. absolutely we're, see that yes like we're just all going to be naked for <laughs> right. for paris fashion week you know um but you can't i mean i couldn't have i couldn't have mapped this mm. you know for any whoever is listening forget the map <laughs> forget the map focus on the virtue focus on the quality that you want to be that you want to embody And then things will fall into place. It's like, you know, I have this vision where 
kids in high school could go to their ga- guidance counselor and say, I want to focus on compassion. I want to, I want to have a life that's about resilience or community. And then they figure out from there what it's going to be. Then you figure out like, okay, I'm going to go clean up rivers. I'm going to make handbags or I'm going to run for office, whatever it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But like the virtue first, and then the expression of that comes into being, but we get it backwards. I'm going to do this and I'm going to get this to prove that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll work some social responsibility and some loving kindness into that. And it's, it does, it's a, it makes it more of a struggle. I think you can yeah. get to fulfillment, but it's more of a struggle. Mm. Yeah. So what were some of the decisions that you made besides leading with virtue um, that you've made along the way to help you like, really build the audience that you have? Was there any strategy that you feel like you implemented early on or um, things that yeah. you did that you mm-hmm. felt really moved the dial for you? Cause I know here's the thing, Danielle, I'm, I'm coming from a place of most of the women in my community have this great sense of wanting to make an impact, wanting to have a difference. It's not about money. Um, it's about impact. And yet we know that women who create wealth can do really amazing things in the world. And it gives power behind our voice and behind our heart and you know, all those things. So I'm, I'm curious for the woman that is listening right now, who would love to build really a movement or have a business that is global or has the reach of a brand like yours. If you could go back and say, you know what, these things that I did, maybe it was just being your most real authentic self and showing up consistently or hiring the right team members at a certain point, just for Mm -hmm. that woman. Yeah. Um, It was very clear to me that I was only going to be myself and I was going to share my experience as I was having it pretty much. Like I've had an operational philosophy of like, you get through your hardship first, never share it publicly when you're in it. And then you turn it into your teachable moment and you give someone the service of like, you've cleaned up the lesson and then you deliver it. So that was very clear to me. Um, there's so you're little... saying you don't, you don't publicly share when like you're going through no the mess. No. Yeah. No. And there's a, there's a psychological reason and a spiritual reason for that. I, if I'm having a hard time, I don't want the energy of other people's projections on me about why I'm in it or how I should pray or what's going to get me out of it. Or just like, mm-hmm. I'm, I have my inner circle. I have my ways. Yeah. And this is my private life. Like, yeah. so yeah, but my my ethos has been, I'm just a seeker. I'm going to, and I'm going to tell you what I figured out and, and how I did it. And that has just required, I mean, what else can I be other than like truthful? Like this is what's the experience. Yeah. So nothing to hide. Um, and, and it's not a branding stunt. I mean, authenticity is magnetic. It's a universal principle, right? Um, so tell me that. about the kind of the, you have parts of your business that are pay what you can. Yes. Where did that come from? I have to be generous. It's almost a, a neuroses. So there's a shadow side to my generosity and there's a light side to my generosity. I mean, mostly I'm in the place now where just, it's very healthy and integrated, but I want things to be accessible. Like my pay what you choose model is also part of how I've done my membership. So if my intention is to get loving kindness and tools for healing to as many people as possible, why wouldn't I make it as accessible as possible 24 seven? That's a good point. Right. So someone would come to me with a, a, you know, a business model and say, well, why don't we do this velvet rope kind of scarcity? It's really just scarcity marketing stuff. Right. And Mm -hmm. I'd be like, why do I want to scare people? Why would I want to do it? There is no scarcity. This is digital. I have love and abundance. (laughs) I have an an infinite amount of this. We're going to give away. Yeah. Um, and the pay what you choose, how that started was, I had a small offering. I had a $150 uh, little business course called fire starter sessions. I think at a $30 something or else. And it was my birthday. And I just was feeling grateful to be alive. I saw, what can I do? Well, just pay what you wish. 
And it was a risk because the technology was set up so that you could suggest a price, but if someone wanted to give you just like a dollar on PayPal, they could. Yeah. And that was hugely successful. And that started this kind of trend. I noticed with pay what you wish. And now we have a pay what you choose model. So it's tiered. And this is part of the power of transparency is here's three prices, obviously low to high. If you pay this price, we break even. And that's cool. If that's where you're really at, cool. If you pay this price, um, we run our business. And by the way, you should know, we have a team of eight women who have children and dogs, you know, mm -hmm. just like you. If you pay this price, we can give back more to communities. Yeah, Make your I saw that on your site, Danielle. I was, I was really impressed with that. I haven't seen that before. And it, it really makes people think about how they want to contribute and how they want to show up because of course the shadow says people are just going to take you for granted and take your stuff yes. and run right that's the yes. shadow and the fear the love is you know what people are going to be in integrity they're going to choose the best for them and for the business and you're very transparent with that and i people have to remember we are small businesses that we have to take care we get to take care of our team mm -hmm. and their families and ourselves and mm -hmm. do good with that so I, I thought that was a really great model when i saw that on your site thanks for sharing that when did that come to be when did you start that well we've been doing the pay what you choose the tiered option for a couple years now the pay what you wish, which was like, anything goes, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like Vegas style e-commerce. Yeah. Um, that was like 10 years ago. And we did try pay what you wish with my current offerings and it didn't work. It wasn't profitable enough. Well, you also have to be sustainable and run the business. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. if they're, yeah. you're going to pay me a dollar, I can't keep, I can't keep doing it. And, <laughs> right? You know, but we have found across the board um, that people are honest. So like pay what you choose doesn't work for my, my current offerings because most people don't know what goes into a digital course. It's like mm -hmm. many, many months, you know, so many tens of thousands of dollars in design and tech and all yep. this stuff. Um, but I've, you know, one of my most touching experiences was I was doing a speaking gig, the lineup afterwards for hugging and book signing, a woman came up to me and handed me a crisp $100 bill. And I was like, girlfriend, what's this about? <laughs> and she said, five years ago, I did your pay what you wish day. I couldn't afford the full value of the product. And I'm here to pay you oh, for it. Wow. Yeah. And it was so moving because in that journey, she had become a successful coach. Some years had gone by. And, uh, and I committed to, you know, I donated that money, but yeah, that's a beautiful story. Yeah. I love that Danielle. So what does inspired living mean to you? Inspired living, mm -hmm. getting your fuel from higher guidance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like really coming through. I'm turning to source. I'm not turning to an influencer or somebody I envy <laughs> or some seven steps on how to crush it or even yourself. Right. Yeah. 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 I am. Well, I'm turning to my soul, yeah. which is going to guide my instead of ego self. self. Yeah. 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 Source. Yeah. And Danielle, when people mm -hmm. go to your website um, and experience what you've created, do you help them get in touch with that? I know there's a lot of modalities and a lot of ways, meditation, breathing. How, how do you walk people through that? Is there a, a certain practice that you help people in, implement in their life to really be able to connect with source? Or is it as simple as just being still and, and listening? That's one modality. I think that's the essential modality. Like you can, mm -hmm. I talk a lot about it and how to be loving. Like if you are running around and creating all this noise in your life, how are you going to really hear what's best for you? You can't. And so I talk about a stillness practice, which is stillness in the morning and stillness at night. So like you tune in, you get your directions and then like rock it out all day, right. do all the things, use all the strategies, go for it. There are ways, proven ways. And then the end of the day is important because that's like for those of us who have even been in just one yoga class, 
Shavasana, corpse pose at the end of the day. You it's integrate what you learn. It's <laughs> yeah. the best. I'm here for yeah. the Shavasana, right? I'm here for um, the Shavasana. <laughs> so for, for me, it's about not repeating what I had to learn today, tomorrow. It's like, oh, oh, yeah, could have been a little it. kinder. Could have taken that. If I just would have taken one break, if I just would have thought before I said that, okay, well, all right, I'm going to be a little more awake tomorrow, as opposed to, you know, you just crash and you just keep making the same mistakes. So it's just like stillness integrate. You're getting wiser every day. If you just give yourself a minute. Yeah. Just give yourself a minute, mm -hmm. Danielle. Thank you for the many minutes you have shared with us today. Um, it has been such a delight to talk with you and to meet you. Like I said, I have just admired who you are in your work for so long, and I'm truly honored to have you on the show and you've shared so much with us. And I'm so excited for everyone to get their hands on the book, how to be loving and what is the best way for them to do that? Talk to us about that. The book is everywhere. We are, of course, encouraging people to get it from independent stores, but get it anywhere. Well, who does not want that? Um, fill your heart and mind up with the book and you are going to be ready and rocking to go. Danielle, thank you so, so much for being on the show. Um, I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Mm, thank you, Carrie. Thank you, everybody listening.